So let's look at it. Simultaneous, are those students exposed to two languages? And be thinking of your learners, the learners in your classroom. Exposed to two languages between ages zero and five. May not have a clearly dominant language, whereas in the sequential, they're exposed to the second language after age five. So knowing that when you sit at a table with your students to do a guided reading lesson, that some are simultaneous and some are sequential, have a little bit of implications. They are developing both languages simultaneously, but when you are assessing them separately, it's going to look like they're, especially at the very early stages, like they're low in both languages, when in reality, we know that they're not. It says here, but if we assess bilingually, we would understand that he may know some concepts in one language and others in the other language. So translanguaging um, was coined by a Welsh educator, Ken Williams. I think it was back in 1994, I believe, something like that, in which he developed a pedagogy for his students for the purpose of receptive and productive use and to deepen and extend their bilingualism. For example, he may read a book in English, I read aloud a book in English, and the students would respond in their dominant language, in the other language. That was kind of like the early beginnings of translanguaging. In this, uh, in this diagram here about a linguistic repertoire, you, it, it, you see the full linguistic repertoire illustrated here and then there are features of Spanish and features of English. In, a, in the linguistic repertoire, what do we have as bilinguals? Linguistic features, phonemes, morphemes, syntactic rules, discourse rules that people draw to, on to communicate. Bilinguals and multilinguals have linguistic repertoires from features uh, that are used in one or more than one language. This one's kind of the same here, right? So when you hear me now as a bilingual, your use the sociocultural reality is that you're hearing this or that. Si comienzo ahora a hablar en español. And sometimes, as we translanguage, there is a little bit of even a hybrid space between the two right here that you would hear. That is the sociocultural reality, but the linguistic reality is that bilingual have one linguistic system with features of both the languages here. That's that internal view. And then the external view is where you select features of those languages to communicate, to make meaning, to enhance comprehension, and so on and so forth.